Hey, what's everyone? It's Wavy Tech. I'm back with another video. And for those of you who haven't seen the earlier video, I recently bought this iPhone SE right here in late 2018, which is now. But just in case you're seeing this in the future, or if you're from the past and you're watching this, I'm letting you know what the deal is. Anyways, so I'm a longtime Android user. I've had the Galaxy S3, I've had the Galaxy S1, I've had the Galaxy Note 4. I don't even know if they call it Galaxy, but I've had the Note 4, and I've had the Nexus 5, and a bunch of other Samsung phones before that that were not Android, but that's what I've had, and this is my first time having an iOS device, so I was really excited. I was, I mean, I still, I mean, don't get me wrong, I like the device. You know what? I'm going to cut right to the chase, okay? Do I recommend the iPhone SE in 2018 for most people? No. I actually don't. I really don't. These are the two types of people I would recommend the Galaxy SE for, or three, I guess. If you're looking for the cheapest iPhone and you're looking to get into iOS like me, hey, it's a solid device. This is better than the 5S or the 5C or, you know, whatever. Person number two, um, people who are looking for a more casual phone, a small smartphone, this is probably the best one. And person number three, recovering cell phone addicts like me. Part of the reason why I got it was because I didn't want to be on my phone so long and I felt like having a smaller screen would help with that. Anyway, it's coming from Android. I was brand new to iOS and I wanted to cover the pros and the cons, but it would have just been too much. There's a lot of cons, there's a lot of pros, and that would be a super long video, and I have a feeling this is gonna be a super long video as it is, so let's get into it. This is the negative things, the things that suck about iOS, or the things that I don't like, and again, I'm brand new to iOS, so if anyone can help me with any of these things, please let me know. Oh, and some of these things have to do with iOS, and some of these things have more so to do with the iPhone SE, and the first thing is, the main reason why I wouldn't recommend the SE specifically is that screen size. That screen size is way too small. The reality is so many people want to do so many different things or need to do so many different things with their phone nowadays that this size is just way, way too small. When it comes to media consumption or when it comes to reading stuff online, um, look, if you're going to spend any sort of extended time on it, I would assume your head would kind of hurt because it's kind of small. So like I said, if it's casual, if it's just here and there, I think this is perfect. Other than that, it's just too small. It's way too small. Uh, look, at this price range, look, I know it's a little bit more, but I would recommend you get the iPhone 6S. Or if it doesn't need to be an iPhone and you want it to be the same price range, I have the Moto G5 Plus and I love this device, so I would highly recommend that one as well. So the screen size also affects not only your viewing experience, but also typing. When you're texting, unless you have it in landscape, which helps a lot, um, vertical texting so when you're texting like this it's just really really hard to do now i know a lot of you can say you know what well yeah you know landscape i'll just use that but the, the reality is most i won't say most but a lot of apps for example amazon won't support this so you will find yourself a lot of times texting like this and it's just a pain in the butt thing number two is the volume the volume is super low on this phone i can definitely see myself and this is bad for a few reasons i can definitely see myself missing alarms maybe not phone calls but a lot of the alarm tones are kind of low, so I can definitely see myself missing alarms. Also, it just doesn't sound great. It's just not that loud. So when you're watching videos or whatever, you're gonna need to crank that one up all the way, and it definitely gets a little tinny at higher volume, so keep that in mind. Thing number three has to do with the volume as well. It's volume management. On my Moto G5 Plus, I have my media volume, my ringtone volume, and my alarm volume. So it makes it really simple. What do I want at what volume? Set it at that. On the iPhone, you have two volumes. It's like ringer and then volume. And and it's like a weird media is mixed. It's just a weird mix and match situation. So what I'm assuming and what I've done to set an alarm is I have to turn the regular volume all the way up and then put it on silent mode because silent mode mutes everything. That way I don't wake up from a phone call, but it lets the alarm go through. But I don't like this because if that's the case, then I have to you know turn that switch on and off every single day, which I would rather not do. But uh, I have to look more to do not disturb. Again, if you can help me, help me out in the comment section down below. But I don't like the fact that it's not just these are your three volumes. Adjust them however you want. Thing number four, the apps look dated. Um, the app icons look dated to me. And actually, the iOS interface is a little dated. It's a little messy in the sense that, I mean, I know there's folders. But I'll put up some examples. But the icons look a little bit outdated. And some of the app interfaces for example, I can specifically say two that I can remember right off the bat is podcast 
podcast. Pocket Cast is an app I like to use a lot, and I just like how it looks a lot more on uh, Android and eBay. eBay specifically looks a little more dated on iOS. Thing number five is the back button. On Android, I love how I always have the back button. If something pops up, you hit the back button. If you open a page, you hit the back button. If you're in an app and you, you, you don't know what setting you just opened, you hit the back button. On iOS, it's a little different. You might have a little back button on the top. If you get a pop-up, you might have to read it and then accept or cancel or any variation of those two or sometimes it's just on the bottom. So sometimes it's on top, sometimes it's an option or it's on the bottom and you have to find it. Like, oh yeah, if I'm typing something, sometimes you have to hit done. It's just so much easier on Android to have a back button. No matter what you're doing, where you are, you can always go back by hitting the back button. On iOS, that's not the case. You either have to find that little arrow, hit done, or make a selection, or just go home. And that is just not as intuitive if you ask me. Thing number six, notifications. Notifications, they're just better on Android, okay? Uh, the Android, I don't know what you call this, the notification drawer is a lot better. I love how you can just open and like respond from there. It's just, for lack of a better word, a little more elegantly done on Android. I think notifications are just better. I'll, I'll, I'll try to look for some examples, but they're just better. Trust me, notifications on Android are much better. Oh, and then I was confused right now because I wrote back button twice, but then back button on iMessage specifically and other apps like I think Amazon for whatever reason, the back button is on the top left. And for some reason, whenever I tap it, it won't work. It's like slightly, I, I just figured it out today, it's the touch sensor or whatever you want to call it, it's slightly to the right of the arrow. So that's a little minor nuance, but it's a con. And then battery life, I, have, I was on iOS 10, battery life was okay. I updated to iOS 12 recently and I want to say the battery life is eh, it's not that great. Maybe I was spoiled by the Moto G5 Plus, but this, or maybe because I just recently did an update, it's still working on some things. But so I'll give it another couple of days before I make a full verdict on the battery life. But so far the battery life I have to say is eh, which, which is not that good, which is a little disappointing. It's not horrible, but it's not super great. And that's a little disappointing because it's a small screen and I don't know if it's 720 or 1080, but it shouldn't be taking up that much power, but it's doable. Now, thing number nine, as we're going down the list, you can tell the issues are getting a little more petty, but the flashlight is just weak. As far as I can remember, people with iPhones always had weaker flashlights for some reason. Like the flashlight app is just super weak. Maybe on the premium, maybe on the thousand dollar options, they're a lot stronger, but if they're not Apple, come on now, we gotta, we gotta put some, let's get some decent lights in these iPhones. For example, if you take a picture at night, some Android phones will just, bam, they'll, you know, even though the iPhone has better processing, sometimes the phone, the pictures will look better on Android devices that have stronger lights just because it's better lit. So I think it would be better if, you know, they just had stronger lights on iPhones. Thing number 10, I just kind of ran into it today on, um, I was in an app, I saw an address, I hit the address, and then the, it takes me to this thing saying that I should download Apple Maps. So I can't change, I, I don't know if there is a way, but please let me know, I don't like that it's not, if there is a way, I don't like that it's not simple to change what my default app is, because I would love to be in an app, tap an address, and then change the default app once to Google Maps, so that the next time I do that, I can always jump to Google Maps from other apps but I have a feeling that Apple wants you to use their services and it's gonna force you to use Apple Maps or you're gonna have to do the whole copy, exit the app, open the new app, paste, which I don't like. Oh, thing number 12, I don't know why I left this last. This is probably the worst one. I've had glitches on my phone, specifically day one. Well, actually not just day one, but the worst ones were day one. The first glitch I had was with the weather. The weather was asking me to use uh, my location services. So it was either like accept or decline or okay or cancel or whatever. And I hit cancel, cancel, cancel. I didn't want it. It wouldn't do anything. So I said, you know what? But I'm just gonna hit okay. I hit okay. So I hit, and it wouldn't do anything. So I hit cancel, nothing. I hit okay, nothing. And I don't know if I could lock it or not, but regardless on whether or not it could, I could not get that thing off. So I had to reboot the phone. Thing number two, I was using the phone and it started, I talked about this in my, my last video. It was making this crazy, like, horrific sound. It was going blah, blah, blah. like, think about like dial up mixed with Satan. Like, and it, it was super loud, which is hilarious because this phone isn't loud at all, but somehow this was making these crazy satanic sounds 
way louder than this phone even goes. So I was actually scared that the phone speaker was gonna blow itself out. Luckily it didn't, but I had to reboot the phone again. And I looked online, multiple people had this problem. I only saw one post about it, but a lot of people said like, they hit that like, oh yeah, me too button. That was super weird. Anyways, I updated to iOS 12. Um, it was fine. I haven't had any of those issues, but I have had this one little hiccup where somebody called me, I was trying to slide to answer and it wouldn't happen. So I don't know what that's about, but that, you know, those are my little glitches that I had with it. Not super specific, but it just seems that a lot of the things are buried in the settings. And some of it could just be me having to get used to it, but it's just that settings are a little hard for me to navigate right now because I'm not used to everything and where everything's supposed to be. So it's a little bit of a pain to have to, like for example, the alarm sound, I had to go to the settings to make sure that my alarm was gonna sound with a reasonable volume. Anyways, as more things come in, I'll let you know. Maybe I'll make a new video if there's enough things that I don't like about the video, about the video, about the phone. But the next video will be about the positive things because it's not all negative. These are just the things that right off the bat I do not like about this phone that I'm starting to find. But there is certainly a lot of positive. iOS definitely has its merits and that will be the next video. But anyways, if you like the video, don't forget to like it. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support my channel, it would mean a lot to me if you use my affiliate links. I'll have one in the description and I'll have a link in the comment section. But anyways, feel free to ask any questions if you have them. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.